Hey guys, Corey with Famous Media, and today we're looking at the Blackmagic Cinema Camera. So the Blackmagic Cinema Camera, in my opinion, is one of the best professional camcorders you can get. The reason is, and I don't want to offend anybody when I say this, I've been using the RED for a few weeks. And the Cinema Camera does better in low light than the RED. It does 2.5K RAW, which some may say, hey, it's not 4K, but really, 4K is not quite the standard yet. And the Ari Alexa only shoots 2.8K, and that camera's well north of $60,000. This camera does pretty darn well in low light, like I said, better uh, than the Red Scarlet. Not to mention the camera has got the same dynamic range as the Scarlet does. In fact, it may do a little bit better because the production camera only has 12 stops and I was able to pull more highlights out of the clouds than with the Red when I did that Blackmagic production camera versus the Red Scarlet uh, Battle Royal, which I'm gonna have the link down there in the bottom. The Blackmagic Cinema Camera shoots Cinema DNG 16-bit uh, RAW, but it also does 1080p ProRes uh, 422 HQ LT and Proxy. The Cinema Camera does have a 2.39 crop. This is not a big deal since Micro Four Thirds is about a 2 to 2.1 crop. So it's a little bit smaller, a little bit tighter of a crop than Micro Four Thirds. So this whole battle over uh, crop factor, I think, is nonsense. Uh, we shouldn't be comparing it to full frame. This is a Cinema Camera get lenses that work for it. Uh, any uh, DX lenses, uh, a Nikon could be put on with an adapter full frame as well, Canon full frame. Um, any of the crop lenses will work well. All of them will work on the cinema camera, so that's great. This is the EF mount, of course. Now, here's something I wanna point out. The uh, SSD some people are scared about or are concerned with the cost and, and how to shoot and dump so much raw footage. Well, you get a 480 gigabyte SSD card, a SanDisk Extreme Pro, which is the best you can get, uh, and they're only gonna run you about $339, whereas the Red Scarlet, for example, you get a 64 gig uh, red card, and it's $800. So that just gets to show you right there, you can get almost a terabyte versus 64 gigs. Not to mention, is in comparison, some people are worried about the battery life, so that's something you don't have to worry about because it lasts about an hour, hour and a half, and then you can get the Switronics Pro battery, which will last four more hours, so you can shoot a whole day on two Switronics batteries at 300 each. Whereas an example, the Red Scarlet, the batteries will die in 20 minutes and they're $250. So that tells you it's not really run and gun and a lot of people love that camera. Well, this camera is better in low light. It can be upscaled to 4K. It has as good or slightly better dynamic range and the batteries last longer. And you're gonna get this camera for less than $2,000. Whereas cameras like the Red, 18 to 20,000. C500s, those are gonna run you $20,000. This is less than $2,000. So let's take a walk around and see what we can do with this camera. Um, Blackmagic has really uh, stepped up their game. They've added uh, the audio meters, time remaining. Uh, pretty soon for the cinema camera, you're gonna be able to format the SSD in camera because you can do it on the production camera, which we're being filmed on right now. So they've added a lot of features to the camera. It, it's just amazing camera to use. It only weighs three pounds. And as by comparison, uh, the Red Scarlet weighs 11 and a half pounds. Even with a handle, a follow focus, a matte box, audio recorder, a microphone, and the Switronics battery, you're only at 10 pounds. So it's a much more uh, nimble rig to carry around. It's lighter and more agile, and it's just much easier to work with. So if you're thinking about a RED or thinking about a C500 or anything like that, this is definitely the best bang for buck when it comes to high quality video at an affordable price. Let's show some of this dynamic range, 13 stops. That is a lot of dynamic range, and I'll tell you the one thing for sure is that Cinema DNG has better ability to pull back highlights than a lot of the different video cameras I've used, including the C300 and the Red Scarlet.
As you can see here, the sky is perfect. Nothing's blown out. And you can still see in the shadow details here on the street level. And my histogram looks beautiful. The shadows and the highlights, neither of them are clipping. And it's a really harsh day. They have uh, headphone outputs as well so you can monitor your audio and they've even added the audio meters to the camera of course and the time remaining in the histogram which is just amazing. And that crop factor does come in handy when you're shooting on long lenses. Like a 200 millimeter becomes uh, well above 400. You're like 450 millimeter range. So the camera is uh, really light and easy to move around. And it's got a lot of great features. So let's go over the camera and a little bit of the features and then we'll walk around the streets and get some more footage. So the features of the Blackmagic Cinema camera are pretty simple. You got your iris button up here which sets your exposure where the camera thinks is best. It'll change the aperture to adjust. Kind of useless to me. If you look here on the focus button, you press it once, the camera will autofocus. Uh, if you double tap, it brings up the focus peaking. So you just double tap like that. You see the focus peaking is gone. Now it's back. Of course, the play button plays your clips. The arrows will browse through your clips. Now when you're in live view and you want to record, you press the record button on the back or the front of the camera. So these arrows right here will change your f-stop uh, if you need to. Uh, this is the stop button and then of course the menu button and the power button. Hold the power button for two to three seconds to turn the camera off or on. Now let's go ahead and go into the menu. Uh, this is the old menu. The Blackmagic production camera has a newer menu which we will go over when we review that camera. So this is your main camera settings. You set the name of your camera so you don't uh, lose uh, your organization of your clips and whatnot. You know which clips came from which camera. Your date, uh, your ISO, which goes all the way up to 1600. You can change that right here. Your white balance you can set, which is very critical for shooting in ProRes, not so much for RAW. Your shutter angle, which they've added all kinds of uh, additions uh, and, and half stops all the way through. So here's your shutter angle, and they've, they've added so many different angles here. You can change it, such minute differences. Uh, 180 is going to give you the exact factor of 48. So when you're shooting in 24 like I am, it's going to give me exactly 48, whereas with a DSLR, you'd have to choose 50, which is a little bit off, whereas this is exact. Uh, you go into your microphone settings. If you're going to shoot and you're going to record audio directly in, turn your microphone all the way down and leave this on mic. If you turn it to line, you have to have a very powerful uh, output signal which I don't have on me so I'm shooting on the streets I use mic and I turn the microphone to 11% that creates a little bit of gain on the camera to help from the output of my zoom H4n when we're recording reviews and stuff like that which is perfect you can also link the channels for audio and it's got a built-in speaker the built-in microphone is okay but it's gonna pick up the fan noise because it's very close to the fan you can still hear it it's pretty decent uh, but I wouldn't recommend relying on it only for syncing audio, especially with film. I would never use it for film, of course. Now, here we go. Here's your recording. You can change from 2.5K RAW, DNX HD for um, different codecs, ProRes Proxy, LT422, and HQ. Dynamic range can be changed to video or film, but you can only use film when you're shooting RAW. They've got 2398, 24, 25, 2997, and 30 frames. And just to let you know, the Red Scarlet only does 30 frames, even in 4K. And the production camera we're shooting on now will do 30 frames in 4K. So that shows you the value uh, that you're getting for the money you pay for a Blackmagic camera, how much bang for buck. You're getting 30 frames at 2.5K or in the production camera, 4K, you're still getting 30 frames. Not to mention the Ursa, you're getting 60. So the Ursa actually is beyond what the Scarlet is. And I keep using the Scarlet as an example because it's the go-to camera independent filmmakers love to use. And it's a great camera, but if you're on a budget and you want to use something that in my opinion is just as good or better in many ways, this is the best bang for buck. This is your display menu right here. We're going to get back to that. Uh, your dynamic range, of course, you can change even if your recording codec is set to film or video. The brightness here I've got to 85. I'll probably turn it up to 90. Uh, these are your zebras. 
We can set it from 75 to 100 and your SDI overlays. One more thing to note, you can do a time lapse in this camera starting from two frames and you can go all the way up uh, to 10 frames and you can take it from one second all the way up. It just keeps on going all the way up to 10 minutes. So you can do different time lapses with the camera as well. So we're gonna turn to the side here. This is the SSD. Make sure you don't jam it in here. Pull out gently. When you place the SSD in, place it against the back side or actually the front side where the lens goes and place it in gently to hear the click. Close the door. Let's turn this around here so you can see the other side of the camera. This is your remote right here. You got your headphone, uh, your double input for recording audio, your SDI out, your Thunderbolt, and of course your power adapter. The camera's pretty light. It's about 3.8 pounds, which is not heavy comparing the fact that the C300 is almost that amount of weight and the Scarlett is four times that amount of weight. So it's a very light camera and easy to use. Of course, I got the rail on the top, if you've noticed, which my Zacuto handle goes on and I took all that off today uh, so it can be nice and light and agile to run around with. So let's get some more shots and have some fun. And you gotta love the shade. The sunshade keeps the sun off the screen, although it does still reflect. But I'm not complaining because the camera's got such a great value for the cost. In fact, it's almost a five finger discount. You get what I mean? Don't you agree, Ray? I feel like I stole it. The sensor is smaller, it's a 2.39 crop, which I hate talking about crops to full frame because this has nothing to do with full frame, but people like to use it as a reference point. One thing I don't like is that people get wrapped up in full frame and they compare everything to full frame that this is, oh, it's a 2.39 crop. Well, it doesn't really matter. Most DV cameras and HDV camcorders from Sony and Panasonic, all the handheld stuff that wedding photographers use, aside from film cameras or DSLRs, they're all like one third chip. Time you talk about crop factor, those things there are way beyond crop. So 2.39 is still a pretty big sensor. It's bigger than Super 16. It's just a little smaller than Micro Four Thirds. I just love how filmic black magic looks. Like it is just gorgeous footage. And the dynamic range is so good you can actually see in the cars and it's pretty dark inside those cars and considering how bright it is outside the camera really does a fantastic job it's uh it's by far my favorite camera to use i do love the production camera 4k it's probably the highest resolution overall best bang for buck camera ever next to the cinema camera but when it comes to running around shooting and not needing the resolution and wanting all the dynamic range the cinema camera packs the biggest punch. They're kind of two slightly different tools used for two different jobs, but they they edit well together. So I know this is a pretty boring shot, but I wanted to take it to see how well the dynamic range would work with the bright sky and it being really dark under here, and it does a fantastic job. A typical DSLR would have the sky blown out and everything in there would be pitch black. So just fantastic dynamic range. This camera does have the most beautiful dynamic range though of any camera I've used. 13 plus stops is, is huge. Most cameras are in the uh, 10 to 11 range, some are 12, some are 13. So most cameras don't quite achieve 13 stops at dynamic range. It's really useful, especially when shooting on a bright sunny day like it is right now. It's a brilliant camera. And Blackmagic has delivered on all their promises as far as fixing the firmware, fixing the noise issues. The FPN mostly is gone in the production camera, if not completely gone, unless of course you're shooting in the dark. Now, here's something I want to point out about the Blackmagic Cinema and production camera. 
They're both similar, except the production camera only goes to 800 ASA, whereas the cinema camera goes to 1600. Now, it doesn't go above that, but what I will tell you is when you're shooting in RAW and you're going into Resolve, if you add one full stop of exposure uh, or two, those are actual increments like you would on ASA or ISO. So basically what I'm saying is if I was to shoot a clip on this camera at 1600 ASA, and then I was to go into post and add one stop in DaVinci Resolve, what that would essentially be is 3200 ISO. As long as the lighting isn't extremely harsh, you can get about two stops in post without adding a whole ton of noise. So on the production camera, you can get about 3200 ISO, and in this you can get about 6400. So it's pretty darn good. I compared this camera to the uh, Red Scarlet, and the Red Scarlet was pretty noisy at 1600, whereas this at 3200, I was able to get a decent image, which is quite a bit better than the Scarlet. So this camera will perform as long as you're not shooting in pitch black. In darker conditions, get a faster lens, like a 1.2, 1.4, even a 2.0. It'll give you a really great image quality. You can push the limit on these cameras quite a bit, especially in RAW, it's really good. So I just wanna let you know that you're not limited on the 800 to 1600 ASA slash ISO on these cameras. You can always push it and resolve. Just shoot RAW, make sure your lighting is decent. If you have an on-camera light, you're good to go. So don't be scared of the light in these cameras. Love low light situations, as long as you know how to handle yourself in editing and handle your situation with the camera and the right lenses. They love low light, you can work with them great. I shoot weddings on them and it's fantastic. Hey look, it's a Starbucks. Oh, my bad, I mean Uncle Nick's. Kinda looks like a Starbucks. Wait a minute, I got deja vu. Were we here before one time? Oh hey look, there's a Starbucks. Oh, never mind, it's just Uncle Nick's restaurant. I'm a little disappointed now, it's kinda hoping to get a coffee. Hopefully Uncle Nick won't see that. Oh yeah, we were here. That's right, 14 to 24 millimeter review. Poor Uncle Nick, he's gonna hate us. I hope he doesn't see my YouTube channel. That would really suck. In fact, I blame everything on Ray, so if you're watching this video, he made me make that joke. It's his fault, completely. Oh, Ray, there's that sewer. I was gonna throw you in that sewer last time, remember? So Ray, why don't you uh, jump in the sewer? That is a huge sewer right there. You can almost live in there. You wanna get in there, Ray? Come on, Ray, get in there. I'm just kidding. I thought it'd be hilarious to throw my videographer in there. Then again, who would film the rest of my video? That's what I'm thinking of right now. So we'll throw you in after the video. In fact, I'm gonna throw you in that sewer now. All right, let's get to shooting. Let's have some fun. Before Ray steals my CF cards and SD cards and SSD cards and deletes everything. I'm gonna come over here and try to get some nice shots here. Not directly in the sunlight, although we can because we've got 13 stops at dynamic range. And if you guys don't have a good monopod, I recommend this one, the Surui, $300. It's awesome. Of course, the uh, Benro S8 head. Fantastic combo. Very, very rugged. I'm gonna try to get a shot here, but the sun is crucial. I'll show you how you can get a nice, great shot and actually see, no matter how bright it is out here, you can still see the sky and the ground level. It's really easy to grade black magic footage too, especially with Resolve. It's just a breeze walk.
With these audio meters, it's very, uh, very good. You can watch your audio with the histogram they've added. Uh, you can totally watch your picture. And the zebras allow you to make sure you're not peeking the highlights or the shadows. So you can get the most out of your 13 stops at dynamic range. The screen is probably one of the best I've used as long as you're not in direct sunlight. Somebody's car is getting broken into. Right here in broad daylight. Oh, they're recording a movie there. That's pretty cool. Ain't nothing like the Big Apple. There's always movies going on. Someone just closed the trailer door. So here we go, we're starting things off at ASA 200 for the low light test, zero noise whatsoever. Moving along to ASA 400, still no noise at all. In fact, you'd have to hire a forensic technician to find any traces of it. Moving along to ASA 800, and the image is just beautiful. If there's noise in that image, then I'm blind. Moving along to ASA 1600, and there is noise creeping into the mid-tones, but just a little bit, and it's film grain-like. It looks really pleasing, and this room is fairly dim. So let's put the camera to work. Many say it's not good in low light, but let's see what it does. Very dark room, one night light, darker than any wedding reception I've ever done. At ASA 200 and 400, the image is too dark to use, but there's no noise. At ASA 800, still a little too dark. You have to bump it a little bit more to get a usable image. The noise is very minimal. At ASA 1600, this is an image we can start editing and post and use, and there is some film-like grain, but very, very amazing quality for that high range. And a film camera, 3200 is going to need a little bit of noise reduction, and at 6400 is just really getting noisy, but it's still performing very good. Let's kick it down to ASA 200 and use the Generate 500D in a pitch black room. Look at the results you'll get at a wedding. Now, I did this test simultaneously at the exact same time, and you can see that the cinema camera is just playing out better than the Scarlet in low light by a long shot. It's not even close. Let's go ahead and do a rolling shutter test. And unfortunately, unlike the production camera, the cinema camera does have rolling shutter and it can be stronger at times depending on how fast you move. Now let's go ahead and look at the ISO chart test at 100%. It looks really sharp, but let's crop in 300% and see how sharp she really is. And it is a very sharp camera, not quite as sharp as the production camera, but then again, even the Scarlet isn't as sharp as the production camera. The Blackmagic Cinema Camera is a very well-rounded performer. 13 stops of dynamic range shows its true colors as you can pull the shadows and the highlights much more than the production camera or the Scarlet. It doesn't shoot 4K, but then again, neither does the Arri Alexa, and it shoots most of the movies today. 2.5K is very much so the standard in today's shooting. And with 2.5K, you can get tack sharp 1080p with monstrous amounts of dynamic range. The camera is light. It does very good in low light capabilities as you've seen in the previous tests. It's a very sharp camera. SSDs are not very expensive and neither is the rigs or the add-on batteries to make this a run and gun camera. What more could you expect for less than $2,000? And also the camera is small enough that you can put it in places that you can't put a big rig camera like the Ari Alexa. And the 2.5K image is just stunning. If you're a professional filmmaker or even a videographer for corporate interviews or weddings, this camera is just an absolute dream to have. And if you're looking for something that's budget friendly, you're not going to find anything on the market better than this. So the Blackmagic Cinema Camera is the best professional camcorder or bang for buck on the market today. Not just my opinion, but also a fact in many ways. 13 stops at dynamic range for one. The camera's less than $2,000, and the low light abilities are as good or better than almost any camera I've used meant for film, especially like the Red Scarlet and the Panasonic GH4, stuff like that. This has more of a filmic grain instead of blocky H.264 codec type noise. The fact that it shoots ProRes 422 HQ LT proxy, does DNX HD, is just fantastic. Now, don't be scared of the battery life. 90 minutes of battery life on this thing beats many other cameras, including the Scarlet, which only gives you 20 to 30 minutes. Another great thing about this camera is the SSDs. People think that's a downfall. A lot of professionals I speak to think it's a downfall. But you get a 480 gig card for $330, whereas something like the Red Scarlet card that you use in the Epic or the Scarlet, the Red Mags are $800 almost, and they're only 64 gigabytes. Plus, it's lighter. It's 3.8 pounds. Most film cameras, FS700 is close to 5 pounds. Scarlet and Epic are in the 11, 12 pound range. So this is a lighter camera too. 
You can also put a rail for a handle with a Zakodo, all different kinds of rigs you can get for it. It even has the, the record button in the front like most film cameras do. And it's an EF mount. You can put a Nikon adapter and use Nikon lenses with it too, me being a Nikon guy, love that. But no, I'm not really biased, I love all lenses. And in fact, I was gonna recommend the best lenses for the camera are going to be your Cineprimes with D-clicked aperture. Rokinon makes some, they're great. I'm using the Canon 24 to 70, but I do recommend Canon Cineprimes, the 24 1.5T, 85 1.3T. They have 11 aperture blades, they're very expensive, but they make the camera perform so much better, even in low light. And that's another topic. Don't be scared, this camera performs in low light. That's a fact, I use it all the time for weddings in really dark situations. Even in my example, I'm gonna put the link down there in the bottom, which I'm gonna compare the uh, Blackmagic Production 4K. I gotta have a battle with the Scarlet, it's already done, I'm gonna put that link down there. This camera will do well. Remember, if you're shooting 400 or 800 or 1600 ASA, every stop and resolve while shooting RAW that you add in post is gonna give you a one stop in ISO. So if you're shooting at 800 and you add two stops, you're now 3200 ISO in the final image. And it does well. Anything under 3200 ASA in decent lighting, you're still gonna get a good image. You may need a little noise reduction, but it's really not that bad. It's, it's nothing that you think uh, that you're gonna have like a totally washed out image or anything, or the colors are gonna be bad. Uh, like I said, this performs better than the Scarlet or uh, some of the DSLRs I've used in the past. It's really decent in low light. And if you're gonna be shooting a low light wedding, shoot at 800 ASA or maybe even 1600, but I, I recommend 800. Try to use a prime at 1.4 or 2.0 and you could always bump it uh, if you're shooting raw especially. If you're shooting ProRes, it's a totally different game. You're gonna need some lights. Maybe a better prime at 1.4, 1.2 or even 2.8 will get you by if you have the right lighting. Don't be afraid, overall great battery life. SSDs are great, low light is fantastic for the money. 13 stops at dynamic range make this a monster and in my opinion is the best professional camera on the market for the money, best bang for buck. It's easier to handle and carry around and I don't understand why this camera doesn't get more love. Don't be scared, I can promise you if you buy it, Blackmagic has kept their word. The audio meters are there, time remaining is there, the histogram is there, uh, the FPN is at a minimum, they're, they're improving that all the time and not to mention the fact that now you can format the cards in camera. What else could you want? I mean, do you want this to shoot and edit your videos for you? I mean, Blackmagic did create Resolve and it's industry standard software, so they know image quality and they're working their way up in the game. Great camera. So hopefully you guys found this review helpful. If you wanna purchase any of the gear I review, including the Blackmagic Cinema Camera, 24 to 70, Surui Monopod, Benro S8 Head, please use the links down there in the information box. Don't forget to subscribe. And I'm Corey with Famous Media. Happy shooting.